here. Thank you for participating and signing on this evening. It is 5.30 on Eastern Standard Time here in Troy, New York. So thank you for coming. We do have quite a sizable group signed up from everywhere from the Northeast, the West Coast and internationally. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, the purpose of this evening is to highlight the dynamic STEM education that you can experience here at Rensselaer. Um, this is the female webinar and we are so excited to have so many strong uh, female Rensselaer graduates here joining us this evening. We would like to start our event with you hearing from our featured student, uh, Catherine Skoulos, who is a junior majoring in biomedical engineering, as well as minoring in economics of biotechnology. Catherine is involved with a myriad of academic, student activities, and research here on campus, and so we can't wait to hear from her. I will um, be just letting you know in the chat if you do have any questions. My colleague Ulysses is also here to assist with those. So if any questions arise or if any connectivity issues are happening, feel free to drop those in the chat and we will do our best to answer those. The Slate webinar platform does work best with Google Chrome as well as Firefox. If you are using Internet Explorer or any other uh, internet browser, please refresh the page if you lose audio as that is a known issue with our platform. Hopefully you hear us all fine this evening and um, if you do have any questions or anything arises, please just let us know. Um, but first, I will pass the first part of this session over to Catherine to tell you a little bit about her Rensselaer experiences so far. Um, so thank you, Pat, and welcome. Yeah, thank you, Lauren. Um, hi, everybody. Again, my name is Catherine. I'm a rising junior. I study biomedical engineering with a concentration in biomaterials, um, and I minor in economics of biotechnology. So I just really wanted to thank you all um, for coming to our Exploring Rensselaer from a Female Perspective event. Um, and just kind of learning more about the impact that women have here on campus and the support really available for women on campus. Um, I hope you guys enjoy um, today and the events that we have planned for you guys. Um, and if you guys have any questions specifically for me, um, you guys can drop them in the chat. Um, but with that, it was really not that long ago um, that I was a student just like you starting my search for colleges um, and kind of navigating that college process. Um, it was really, you know, and it wasn't really difficult for me to kind of understand where I wanted to go um, and a place for me to call home for the next four years for my academic career. Um, I really always knew that I wanted to do biomedical engineering, um, being that I was always excelling in biology and other science classes with a passion for solving problems related to medical applications. So in my process, I found a few things that were really, really important to me. Um, the first of which really being that strong engineering curricula that Rensselaer offers for students um, with the ability to pursue the arts. So I was very, very involved in music in high school. Um, I was in every choir you could probably think of. Um, so I really wanted a place where I would be able to kind of embrace um, the arts while also having that strong, um, like very well-known engineering um, school and curriculum. Um, with that, for me, also came campus and class size. So you can kind of see I included two pictures of campus on the slide. Um, the first one in the bottom um, right corner is actually the bridge. It lights up at night. Um, pretty cool to see. But that bridge um, connects um, academic campus and um, Freshman Hill or kind of residential campus where all of the freshmen live. So when I was really looking for a school, I wanted a place um, that was walkable for me where I would be able to have like those smaller classes and Rensselaer really hit the button for me with that. Um, so I only point out the bridge because it's like, you know, it's very close to get from one place to another place. Um, and hopefully you guys can at some point join us on campus. Um, but in terms of class size, um, RPI is about 6,200 students. So for me, I mean, all of my classes last year as a sophomore for biomedical specific classes were 20 people or less. So that was a really, really big deal for me, especially because I'm somebody that likes to ask my questions, likes to get attention, all that kind of stuff. Um, with that also really came proximity from home. Um, so I am about like two hours away in Northern New Jersey. So that was the perfect distance for me and my family. Um, I'm close to home, but at the same time they can come and visit too. 
Um, there's also lots to do in downtown Troy. I don't have any pictures of downtown Troy on the slide, um, but there is a picture on the left side of our experimental media and performing arts, which actually looks over downtown Troy in the whole Hudson Valley region. Um, so that's really, really cool. Um, but downtown Troy really has so many activities, um, things that you can do. Um, we have our weekly farmer's market, which I've really enjoyed here as a student. Um, but with that, I think my biggest point um, which kind of really hit home for me was the diverse and passionate student body. Um, so you could see on the slide, I have a whole bunch of pictures from all the different um, activities that I'm in, so I'll get into that. Um, but everybody here is different. We have different interests. We study different things. But I find that we're each very passionate and we have that drive and that really, you know, to like want to succeed. Um, in everything that we do, whether it's academics, sports, a cappella, singing, any of that kind of stuff. Um, and that was something that was really apparent to me when I, you know, was looking at colleges and I came on a tour too. Um, so it was really all of those factors combined that really um, kind of moved me in the direction of choosing RPI um, as my, you know, college. Um, so my major also really offered a lot of opportunities for me. Um, to be really engaged in the program of study. So I just, I really wanted a school where I would be able to kind of get more of that hands-on um, academic curriculum and also really kind of get to concentrate a little bit more in what really interests me about biomedical engineering. So here we have five concentrations for that. Um, I'm a biomaterials concentration, so that looks like um, taking classes in cell and tissue engineering, so that's pretty cool, um, and also drug and gene delivery, so really getting to pursue my passions um, within my passion has been a really big thing for me. Um, we also have lots of research opportunities, um, so undergrad research is a big culture here on campus. Um, we have um, lots and lots of opportunities, specifically in my our my department, um, we have our Center for Biotechnology and Interdisciplinary Studies that really has a whole breadth of research available for undergraduate students, graduate students, uh, PhD students, so so many. Um, and really with that, the faculty that kind of do the research and also teach our classes are very active um, and engaging in student interests. Um, you know, I wouldn't say here at all that RPI is like super competitive. Um, I would say that we're more of a collaborative environment. So even among professors and students alike, you could always find the help that you need. Um, so in addition to school and academics, I quickly found that there are just so many communities to be a part of. Um, on campus, I'm involved in the Rensselaer Lyrics. So that's one of four acapella groups on campus, the RPI Concert Choir, the Society of Women Engineers, the Biomedical Engineering Society, and even the Women's Mentoring Program. So all of these have really allowed me to foster my leadership skills and hone my academic potential, um, most specifically um, with the Society of Women Engineers, or SWE as we like to call it, and the Women's Mentoring Program. Um, so I have included a whole bunch of pictures on there from SWE, so you can kind of see that um, the Women in STEM sticker, that was actually stickers that we had made up that one of our members made, so it's really nice to have that. Um, and there's also um, a bunch of different um, photos from events that we did. Um, the Society of Women Engineers offers like outreach opportunities, so that's a really great thing to be a part of because you kind of get to inspire the next generation of young female engineers. Um, so that's something that I'm a part of um, with SWE. So we've done newsletters, we've done Exploring Engineering Day with um, younger students like in middle school and elementary school. So it's been a really great way um, to both have that community of women engineers and also um, kind of get to inspire the next generation as well. Um, but the Society of Women Engineers really is just a really great community for empowering, inspiring, and supporting women on campus. So you don't even have to be an engineering student. As you guys know, I'm sure we have so many um, different majors here on campus. Um, but you could be an architecture student, biology student, you could be any kind of student and be in the Society of Women Engineers. Um, what's nice is that they hold specifically for our members um, professional events and social events, so you can kind of engage with each other and the campus community. Um, I would say that I don't have a favorite type of event, but that definitely the professional events um, have really actually helped me to develop my um, professional skills. So that's like anything from reviewing resumes to kind of 
you know, what, how to like do an elevator pitch and all that kind of stuff. So um, there are lots and lots of resources through the Society of Women Engineers to support our like ladies on campus. Um, and it's a, just a really great way to meet other women on campus with similar interests. Um, definitely this past year, I've made some of my closest friends um, in SWE and really have gotten to be more involved with SWE. Um, so I do work with our alumni as alumni relations director. Um, so that kind of brings in, you know, past RPI graduates, um, specifically women, obviously, um, to kind of come back and we get to network with them. We get kind of like those professional tips. And what's been really useful with that specifically is you kind of have your own kind of little network of RPI suite alumni. Um, and that's a great way for you to kind of get advice on, you know, jobs, um, resumes again and stuff like that and even get a job. So that's really, really cool to have um, on campus for our ladies. Um, Next, I just kind of wanted to go over the women's mentoring program since I, a lot of you um, are definitely incoming freshmen. So um, you can be in the women's mentoring program as a first year freshman student. So that's a really, really, I've found to be a really valuable resource. Um, I got an email from them when I was like a freshman in like July. Um, but that's really nice because you kind of get paired up with a mentor and now it's like group mentoring. So you get like a group of other mentees with your mentor um, that have similar interests, similar majors. So that's a really great way to kind of make that community um, for women on campus as kind of like a smaller minority population. So you kind of have that right coming into RPI. Um, and what's really nice about the women's mentoring program is it kind of inspires the next generation of Rensselaer women to achieve academic and professional excellence. So again, like the Society of Women Engineers, they hold like specific um, professional and social events to kind of get you know, get to know each other, develop your leadership skills, um, and kind of also get like emotionally intelligent leadership skills. So it's been really great to be a part of that as well. So I get to serve as a mentor, so hopefully I'll get to see some of you. Um, but it's just been, um, just a really great resource for our women on campus. So having these organizations and others for women on campus has really allowed me to reach beyond my academic potential by helping me foster relationships um, with other women on campus and again, even alumni who went through these programs previously. So being able to make these connections has really made all the difference for me at RPI. Um, and because of them, I was actually able to get my first co-op um, at Bristol Myers Squibb. So you'll see their little logo on there. Um, but that was a really, really cool experience for me. I met one of our alumni. Um, she previously went to RPI, obviously, um, and she works at Bristol Myers Squibb. We got to talking at the career fair, and that was online. Um, and that kind of opened up the door to me. Um, I applied, and then I connected with her on LinkedIn, and that kind of kickstarted my journey um, to now working at Bristol Myers Squibb. Um, so with BMS, I do. Um, I'm a part of the large scale cell culture manufacturing co-op um, in commercial biologics. So we focus on um, upstream and downstream processing of a rheumatoid arthritis drug. Um, so with them, I kind of am starting to work on a project um, kind of with optimizing the um, biologics process to kind of figure out when the best times are to do preventative maintenance, the impact of that maintenance, and kind of getting to create a tool to help out um, my manager and other people in my department. So that's really, really cool. And all of that came from just a woman that went to Rensselaer. Um, overall, I'm really just grateful every day for really choosing RPI for my college experience because I've truly um, experienced so much in doing so. Um, so as some of you are still on your college search, I encourage you to stay true to all of your interests. As women coming into STEM, there will be challenges along the way, but just know that your fellow and future RPI peers, both men and women are here to support you on your journey to success. Um, so I hope you all enjoy the event and let me know if you have any questions throughout the presentation. Thank you so much, Catherine. Wonderful to meet you. And thank you so much for sharing your experiences with all of us. 
I'd just like to remind everyone that tonight's program will take place over the next several hours. Um, your email confirmation will contain all of the links that you need uh, to go to all of the different webinars and opportunities that we have this evening. I do have a brief video now uh, to kind of break it up here. So without further ado, I will play this video and I'll be right back with you all. My name is Audrey Sandinato. I'm studying mechanical engineering at RPI and I'm getting a minor in computer science. I'm a senior here currently and I'm from originally Hanover, Massachusetts. Hi, my name is Dia Shah. I'm a sophomore biology major and I'm pursuing a minor in strategic communication. Um, I'm from Long Island, New York. Hi everyone, my name is Kaylin Edwards. I'm a senior here at Rensselaer majoring in biology and I'm from Southern Pines, North Carolina. My name is Grace and I earned my BS in chemical engineering in May and I'm currently part of the co-termal program at RPI and I'm pursuing my master's in mechanical engineering. I'm from Hopewell Junction, New York, so about an hour and a half south of RPI. Hi everyone, my name is Michaela Gray and I'm a junior electrical engineer minoring in sustainabilities here at RPI. I'm from Middletown, New York. One of my favorite spots to grab food in downtown Troy is definitely Manorys. I'd have to say Whistling Kettle. Uh, Panera Bread in our student union. When it comes to brunch, I would say at Bar H. <laughs> <laughs> Their brunch is so good. It's one of our dining halls on campus. Our Women's at Rensselaer mentoring program, it's designed for all of our incoming first year females on campus. Typically you'll get paired up by major, interests, clubs and activities, or even from your hometown. Uh, and this is a great way to kind of have a mentor from a female perspective in such a male-dominated STEM field, especially your first couple semesters here on campus. The Society of Women Engineers is a not-for-profit educational and service organization that empowers women to succeed and advance in the field of engineering. From meeting new friends, to networking with companies, and even attending national conferences, SWE is an organization that has supported me through my college career as a woman in STEM. I would say that joining Greek Life was one of the best decisions I made because it's such a strong support system of people who are honestly just there for you no matter what. Um, it's just an amazing way to not only be involved on campus, meet new people, but also it's a very eye-opening thing to like all that there is in the world. At RPI, women have the opportunity to participate in sports at any level. There are varsity sports, we have club sports, as well as intramurals. So there's something for everybody at RPI. And it's a great way to find other women that have similar interests and passions for the same thing that you do. Uh, a piece of advice I'd give to any incoming freshman is honestly uh, just to ask for help often and early. I'd say the hardest part for me my freshman year was figuring out what I wanted to get involved in. My biggest piece of advice for a freshman is to not worry about picking your dream school. It's really important to use all the help that's around you. All right, well, thank you so much for tuning into that. And for the rest of the time we have here before six o'clock, I'd like to just go back to the beginning and familiarize all of you with Rensselaer. Whether it's your first time or 10th time interacting with us or the 100th, we welcome you um, here to our community to learn more. Um, but we were founded in 1824 by Stephen von Rensselaer, and we were the, actually the first technical school in the English-speaking world. Now, von Rensselaer had the overarching ethos that we exist for the purpose purpose of instructing persons in the application of science to the common purposes of life. Many problems and issues back in the early 1800s needed to be solved through the hands-on approach. The majority of denizens in this area were farmers, and so the approach back then was to apply math and science to further the human condition. As von Rensselaer's idea took shape, RPI was born. So we were the first to hand out an engineering degree, and in fact, it was in civil engineering. So although we were founded in near, uh, nearly 200 years ago, we are simultaneously the oldest technological school in the country, as well as one of the most modern STEM institutions here in the US per the Princeton Review. So Catherine uh, briefly mentioned some of the statistics that we have here, um, but we do have approximately 6,200 undergraduate students, um, 1,300 graduate students, and between those two populations, we represent all 50 states, as well as about 60 countries.
Um, our first year retention rate is 92%. So that means that from freshman to sophomore year, our students are happy and staying on campus and continuing the Rensselaer education. Our female to male ratio is 32% to 68%. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that in uh, future slides here. We do have a 12 to one student to faculty ratio, over 200 clubs and organizations on campus, 23 athletic sports teams, uh, two D1, which is men's and women's hockey, and 21 D3 sports as well. Our mascot is the Puckman, and I can't wait to go back to hockey games eventually. Uh, but getting back into the history um, of females here at Rensselaer. So Rensselaer alumni have had a huge impact on our world and the society around us. Lois Grimm and Mary, Mary Ellen Rathbone were the first two women to graduate from Rensselaer in 1946, pictured here on the slide. Since they graduated, there have been many amazing women passing through our doors following in their footsteps. To name a few, we have Claire Frazier, class of 1977, a pioneering genome explorer in her field and one of the world's most highly cited microbiologists today. We have Marta Bon Mayer, class of 1979, who's a groundbreaking female test pilot and NASA administrator. We also have Carly Stripe, class of 2008, one of our younger alumni, um, founder and COO of BarkBox, the, bar the subscription service for your dog. And I know there have been many spinoffs to that with cat boxes and things like that. And as a cat owner, I am very proud uh, that she kind of started that wave to care for our pets. As you can see, women have graduated from Rensselaer and they have played a huge role in our society and shaping the world around us. Rensselaer is led by Dr. Shirley Ann Jackson, and Dr. Jackson became the 18th president of Rensselaer back in 1999. She's a theoretical physicist who came uh, from the Clinton administration. She sat on the board of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission under President Clinton and then sat on the President's Council of Science and Technology under President Obama. Dr. Jackson has been an absolute trailblazer throughout her career as the first African-American woman to receive her PhD from MIT and the first African-American woman to lead a top-ranked research university, which is us, RPI. So lucky. More recently, she served on the New York Forward Reopening Board for COVID-19's task force. So she was responsible for um, reopening the entire state of New York, going through the plans last spring when everything was uncertain. Her primary vision regarding what a Rensselaer education offers has led to the, to the development of female inventors, explorers, discoverers, entrepreneurs, and visionaries of all kinds. Rensselaer is committed to helping their students succeed, to lead, and to change the world under Dr. Jackson's leadership. Now, RPI consists of five schools with a wide interdisciplinary focus where students are encouraged to explore not only their primary interests, but secondary and tertiary interests as well. We are five schools with very low walls, and we encourage all female students and all students to explore every realm of what they're interested in as they progress into their college careers. We obviously have very ambitious women studying across all the schools, as you can see from Catherine's presentation earlier. And if you do want to dive more into academics, I encourage you to log on to one of our information sessions as well. As I mentioned earlier, we have a 32 to 68 male to female camp, uh, ratio here on campus. And this statistic is also true within the School of Engineering itself, which houses over just about half of our undergraduate population. The Dean of Engineering is passionate about encouraging more female students to be interested in engineering, and he has a goal to increase female population here on campus to 40% by 2024, our bicentennial. We are well ahead of the national average of women in STEM, which hovers in the about low to mid 20% range, so 32 is definitely nothing to sneeze at. The Dean of Engineering truly feels that women make the engineering profession better and stronger. Research has shown that women seem to focus on applications that impact society and the world positively. And this is a core value of Rensselaer, to our core. Female students at Rensselaer are successful in their classes, involved in so many extracurricular activities, and throughout this evening, you'll hear different experiences from all of our talented females on campus. They're involved in uh, study abroad, research, co-ops, internships, and everything under the sun here on campus. Co-op and internship opportunities are widely accessible for, for Rensselaer students, including all of our females. And we do have a session at seven o'clock highlighting um, a few different um, experiences for co-ops. So if you did sign up for that, get excited and we'll see you back at seven o'clock for that. But pictured here on the slide are examples of recent uh, co-op and internship employers, as well as top graduate schools that students have gone to in recent years. 
We have had students getting jobs at Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Ernst & Young, Global Foundries, Regeneron, GE, Grimshaw, Grimshaw Architects, as well as NASA, so you can even make it up to the stars. We also have students who decided to con continue their education going to graduate school at Carnegie Mellon, Duke, Harvard Medical School, Northwestern, MIT, just to name a few. Now we will um, touch upon the Capital District through the student presentations throughout this evening, um, but student life for Rensselaer students really does focus in Troy, which is a city of 50,000 people. There's plenty to explore and there's so much even to do on my bucket list as I moved here two years ago. But there are 18 colleges and universities here in the Capital District of Albany, creating a young college-friendly population for males and females alike. Even though Troy is considered a small city, it has 195 unique restaurants ranging from Greek, Korean, Moroccan, Mexican, American barbecue, Italian, and many more. So Troy hosts many events throughout the year, even through COVID, including a farmer's market that was socially distanced and is now back outside, Troy Night Out, which is a special end of the month celebration where restaurants encourage everyone to come try their specials, have special discounts and more. I did that in June, it was so much fun. They have a pig roast, chowder fest in February, rockin' on the river music series and a Victorian stroll in the holiday season as well. So if you haven't checked out everything cool that Troy has to offer, feel free to go on their website because there are so many more resources to figure out um, and to explore. So now that you're familiar with Troy, I'd like to just lastly touch on some of the student experiences here um, and some facts for you to take with you. So as I mentioned, we have 23 intercollegiate college sports, 12 men and 11 women to be exact. D3 for all of our sports except for ice hockey, which is D1. We have varsity club and intramural sports as well. About 75% of students participate in some type of sport here on campus. And we often find um, that males and females alike really do uh, make the most of their time as they're heavily involved. Over 200 clubs and activities exist ranging from art, music, drama, community service, multicultural clubs, religious clubs, Greek life, honor society, and more. There's so much to see and do, and our students are widely involved on campus. So I like to say you'll never find a Rensselaer student sitting in their dorms with nothing to do. They're going to be out changing the world and affecting their communities in a positive way. Most importantly, Rensselaer has strong female-focused student groups such as Society of Women Engineers, the Women's Mentoring Program, sororities, and athletic teams that provide a safe community for female undergraduates to connect with each other. And I know Catherine already mentioned some of those that she's, in, um, she's involved in as well. As you can see, young women as well as students at Rensselaer are involved in campus community and strive to make it the best it can be. Throughout the rest of the program tonight, you'll have the opportunity to hear from current students and staff members about some of the other opportunities that are available. Please make sure to follow us on social media, check out our YouTube channel. There are so many other sessions like this that are recorded and posted on YouTube for a rainy day or for later tonight if you want more. And I would like to highlight our custom view book, which is an online brochure that you can make yourself go.rpi.edu forward slash CVB. Put that in your browser and you'll be able to create your own digital brochure in just minutes so that you can edit and share with family and friends. I would like to leave you with a quote from uh, Marta Bon Mayer, class of 1979, who we mentioned earlier in the presentation. She says, success, success stems from the four rights, the right training, the right time, the right place, and the right attitude. We couldn't agree more. So thank you once again for attending our female event this evening. We will see you in the next alumni panel in just a few minutes. Please revert back to your email confirmation to get hooked up in that panel as we have plenty of more amazing programming for you this evening. If we didn't get to your question, please feel free to email us at admissions at rpi.edu. I do see a lot of great things coming in here and we'll have the opportunity for more Q&A throughout the evening as well. But I really appreciate your time this evening. On behalf of everyone here at Rensselaer, we appreciate your time and hope to see you in the future. Thank you all and we'll see you on the next presentation.